bastard. So because I had trouble with this the last time I came out, which I didn't bother putting up, because it didn't seem to pick up the external mic, or should I say the, uh, the add-in mic, I did some testing yesterday, you know, it was, seemed alright, but I'm trying the uh, recording it directly to the wireless mic. So I don't know if it records to the camera and the mic, or just the mic. So we will find out, won't we? Road ahead closed. Don't we always love to see those signs? No details. Could be any of these bloody roads. All we know is one of them somewhere is closed. Anyway. Why, hello. How the devil are we? Good. So first and foremost, Congratulations, Derek, and commiserations at the same time. Ooh, squirrely gravel. Um, happy new bike. Very nice. And sad to see that you had a spill on it already. As you say, mate, if something's going to happen, it will happen to Derek. Um, so, yeah. Beautiful bike, though. To me, you can't beat the sound of a screaming in line four, but each to their own, isn't it? Um, second up, Ainsworth Rider and Silver Fox giving Derek an escort. Jolly nice of them, wasn't it? And I'll tell you what, Derek, maybe you ought to put a claim in to that, uh, that roadside calf that was supposed to be open seven days a week. Because if they'd have been open, you'd have had your bait and sarnie and your coffee and you'd have been home by six o'clock. And the workman would have been there to give you a hand getting the bike away. Anyway, so I'll stick links into various things there for you. Um, Mr. Ian Hughes, congratulations on 2100 knocking it out of the park. Uh, he's done a Royal Enfield shotgun impressions video. So I'll stick a linky in for that. Uh, Blake's Pipes. What's he been up to? Oh, he did a uh, St. Patrick's Day parade which I then consequently had a bit of a rant about. It's just always, I don't know, as I said in, in my comment, the sensationalization of St. Patrick's Day. Don't get, don't worry, we get it here in, in in England, not just not just Blighty in England, St Patrick's Day. Everybody has a orgasm of green, but in the states, all right. So they, you know, there were a number of Irish settlers in the states, but there were a number of Scottish settlers and Welsh settlers, and believe it or not. Truth be told, English settlers. Although you wouldn't think it, would you? So, I had a whinge about that. Because I am, of course, a miserable, cynical old bastard. 
So that brings me on to... Where have I been? What have I been up to? What's happening in the world of me, of Ice Diddy? Oh dear. Not that anyone should really uh, <laughs> be too fussed by it, but I was doing well. I was I was doing a video a week, which is what I was trying to do. Um, but unfortunately, unfortunately for me, I'm one of these people that suffers from the old black dog as Winston Churchill used to say the big D depression and anxiety and it's obviously been brewing for a while these things do they simmer away in the background like a balloon filling up and then all it takes is a sharp object doesn't matter how significant it is just a sharp object and pop uh, and I just I just lost all interest in pretty much everything little lambs you can't lose interest in little lambs though uh, I stopped watching moto vlogs I, I stopped everything really um, I mean that's what it does to you it's a thief it robs you I don't know if I've I don't know I, I I certainly suffered with it since my teenage years. Um, now, whether I'm just susceptible to it or whether the death of my father at 14, watching him die in absolute misery and agony and with no dignity of uh, oral cancer whether that triggered it I don't know as far as I'm concerned depression is like obesity anyone's capable of becoming fat it's just that some people seem extremely prone to it and no matter what they do they always struggle with it and some people can seem to eat as much as they want and do as little as they want and not put an ounce on. But the possibility is there. And I think the same is for depression and anxiety. We can't help the way we're wired. So yeah, I just, I, I just switched off. Um, It's not, it's possible that, you know, I've been a bit stressed lately, um, as some of you may or may not know, I'd embarked on buying a flat, uh, first time buyer at my age, um, out of necessity. And it was ideal, it was, it was perfect. It's next door to where I live currently. Um, you know, I live with Mumsy, bless her. So it was next door, garage. So there'd be no pressure on moving. I could move as slow as I want. I'd have a garage, I'd have a parking space. And most importantly, up next door so I can keep an eye on on mother you know she's not so steady these days and when I 
did the viewing and went back to the uh, estate agents and sat down with the mortgage advisor being aware of the fact that it was going to be a leasehold property I asked the question uh, is there likely to be an issue with keeping a dog and he felt well no I don't see why you know it's not a high-rise flat shouldn't be an issue okay and then I had all that problem with Halifax which caused a problem or it, it narrowed my options of mortgage provider the mortgage in principle not a problem but because of the uh, fraud fraudulent Halifax account once you submitted your actual full credit report all of a sudden a lot of the offers just vanished off the table and, and so I was uh, so I was left with a company that can take these factors into consideration they're a bit more than the computer says no uh, so they were fine with everything. They understood. I had the letters from the Halifax agreeing that it was a fraudulent account and it's just that they were so inept at dealing with it, it was causing problems. And all was hunky-dory. Uh, and then they undervalued the property. Which made things very difficult. because I had few options as far as mortgage provider goes because of the fraudulent account and therefore the derogatory remark on my credit history. So one of the few companies that would lend me the money decided that the offer that I had put in was too much. And because they'd undervalued by more than 5%, there was no chance of an automatic appeal to get it re-evaluated. Re which then left me with the dilemma of call the whole thing off desperately try and sort this out with Halifax immediately which just wasn't going to happen um, or try and bridge the gap myself so go ahead with the mortgage lenders revised uh, amount that they were going to lend me and try and bridge the gap myself which I could have done but it would have just wiped me out completely um, Sorry, I was just one thinking I've ended up coming somewhere I wasn't intended to come. Uh, but anyway, anyway, let's continue. So yeah, try and bridge the gap myself, which would have left me with absolutely no money at all. Zero, zilch, nothing in the bank, no savings, nothing. Which I'm sure is what a lot of people have to do to scrape together a deposit for a mortgage. But I didn't want to have to do that, if I could possibly help it. Being a single uh, household income, you know, it's a bit dodgy, isn't it? So, anyway, Rob came up with a good idea, the, my mortgage advisor. Let's ask the Halifax for a mortgage. Because if they say no, we point out the fact that, well, it was their problem in the first instance, which is why they're saying no. Anyway, as luck would have it, they were quite quite fine with the idea. Um, and they valued the property. Was Yeah, they valued it at what I'd offered, so all good. So I paid my down payment on the conveyancing fees and I'd already paid all my other fees. And then the lease details came through. Um, 
and the sellers have to fill out a questionnaire regarding the lease and were there any restrictions on the lease and in there it says strictly no pets and so at that point I think that was probably the sharp object that popped the balloon full of depression um, because there was no way no way on God's earth I was leaving my dog behind uh, I wasn't prepared to ignore the restrictions and find myself in breach of the lease and so after nearly shredding the whole fucking lot and just having done with it and just accepting the fact that this was never going to happen I did approach my solicitor and say look can we can we see if we can get a variation so after a tense couple of days of fully expecting them to come back and say no we got a yes which was brilliant huge relief and so for those who aren't familiar with leasehold like I wasn't so we have a block of six flats and obviously in order you know it's a single building so you don't have a one person who owns everything so you form a company in this case Jewish Flats Limited and they are <clears throat> they are the freeholder of the land and the property and as a leaseholder you become a shareholder in that company right so Hewish Flats Limited is at the top of the pyramid they appoint a managing agent to deal with all the day-to-day -day stuff okay and I had a knock on the door from the people that are selling to say I just want to check you know how things are going because we're stuck in this loop how important is it a deal breaker the dog issue to which I said well yes you know it is a deal breaker unfortunately and they said well we're stuck in this sort of circular argument which doesn't make much sense so the directors of the freehold company have no issue and have given permission for me to keep my dog but the managing agents which are appointed by the freeholders have refused um, and it's so you're in this bizarre situation so I emailed my conveyancer so I left it with her she phoned me on the Friday Friday evening at like 10 to 5 to say I'm phoning you so as not to shock you I don't want you to have a really crappy weekend just reading this email but the managing agents she, so she sent me the email in the end but she told me that the managing agent had come back and said um, I'm surprised that your client and uh, the sellers are ready to exchange contracts because the last time we spoke the dog was a critical issue I do hope you're not trying to uh, slip the dog in by the back door so to speak because if it's found living at Hewish Flats it will, uh, we, it will be requested to be rehomed so I'm now back in despair land um, so I went round to see the sellers after I've got home long drive home I'm reading the email and while I'm talking to him and at the bottom uh, my spirits are lifted a little bit because she signed off my solicitor to say don't worry you know we'll get this sorted because it's nonsensical the freeholders have agreed and we have an agreement from the freeholders so 
Anyway, the managing agent initiated a vote, if you like, amongst the other five uh, occupiers of the flats, all of which, all of whom, had no issues. So I finally got permission. So finally, we've got there. They do say that moving house is one of the most stressful times of your life. And I can't imagine, I mean, I'm, I'm not in that, I'm, I'm the end of the chain or the beginning of the chain. I'm not selling, I mean, good God. It's just crazy. So I think we're finally there over the line and hoping to exchange contracts uh, very shortly. So I'll have a garage to put the mouse in and I'm just I'm just biding my time trying to get over this little uh, depressive slump. I'll get there. You know, these things take time. So that's just a long-winded short update from me to you. <laughs> from me to you. And then hopefully I can uh, get back to making these rather silly, pointless little videos. I'll tell you what, I'm sweating my tits off. I had no idea what what to go with as far as clothing went. Because it was warm but chilly, if you know what I mean. So I thought, well, I'll put my base layer on and a T-shirt and then my jacket with no thermal, no kais jacket, obviously. This road is dreadful. Um, and yeah, I can feel the heat. <laughs> now to those kind souls that watch me and support me and make their own content, you know, I apologise if I haven't been watching or leaving comments. There's nothing personal. I just have not engaged with anything, really. Um, I think I just needed that step back a little bit. I so I did go out and make a video two weeks ago. And the mic didn't work. So my apathy was only multiplied then. Um, oh yeah, it's a funny old game, isn't it, life? Nice view out over there. As always. Now that's, uh, I think that's probably Coney's Castle. I hadn't intended to come here. I was going to go to West Bay, but I think I was too busy rabbiting on. I wasn't really thinking and went past the turning. But I suppose you might as well head on out to Coney's Castle. It's just that I'm a month early this year. Because uh, it was... It was the first video I did. Wasn't it? In 2022. So I came out again in 2023 at the same time.
So here we are. I suppose nearly the beginning of uh, year three. Is it really? Sorry, I don't know, my headset was bleeping and I don't know why. So this will be the third time up here on, a th <laughs> on each time on a different bike. It's always windy up here. Right, well, just in case the sound hasn't come out, um, I just thought I'd prove the point. I am out. I am still alive. Just. And, uh... As hopefully you've just heard, I came. I didn't intend to come out this way. I was going to go to West Bay, which is over that way somewhere. Um, but it was too busy yapping to miss the turning. So we're here. We're a month early. I think it's May, isn't it? Normally. Um, so yeah, while well, the sun's out. It's not blowing an absolute gale. You probably can't see much that way because of the sun, but it's a bit hazy. Should be able to see the sea, but what have we got? A gate with a view. So there we go. Two gates with a view just for you I mean I could bring my drone up here again but I've already done that so it won't look any different will it anyway I think what I'll do for the return leg is I'll try using the mic as I normally would, just plugged in, and not do the separate recording, because I've no idea if that's worked out well or not. <sighs> but we'll give it a whirl. Okay. I'm putting my trust in you. Why, I do not know. Fucking technology is all I can say. You bastard.
great view to wake up to every day. Standing up for your benefit, Derek. Because <laughs> I can, you can't. <laughs> I'll be joking, my friend. Okay, well, because life's a challenge and uh, everything sucks. That's the sound we've got from the video on the way out. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's picked up on the mic and recorded okay. Otherwise I'll be a bit annoyed.